Hey YouTube, I am going to go through my camper build. I just started, uh, I'm on I think day 10, but not working like long days or anything. Uh, I'm not done the self charging for the auxiliary yet. I've got the cable set up there, it's a uh, four gauge. I'm not using it. I don't need a cable that thick, it's just all I had. All right, so I guess starting at the front, no changes really. I've got a little cover down there for the window. Um, I don't really use it. I mainly put a separator here. I got the water jug there, about five gallons of water. There's my uh, little separator there. I built this frame. It's a, on a ramp system here, folds out into a bed. It's about 80. Well, not about, it's exactly 80 inches long and 49 inches wide. So slightly narrower than a full size bed, but just as long as a queen size. And I bought this memory foam mattress. Uh, very nice. Uh, it's a four inch gel bamboo memory foam from Amazon. It was on sale for $130 and I just got a queen size and I cut the edges off and made four pillows that's a fabric right there yeah okay um, I guess we'll start in the middle here all right so first I got these two lights there we go and my TV screen I installed just a computer monitor. I got an LED because it's ultra low power consumption. Um, OLED is better, but I can't afford that. Oh, really? My bed wasn't far enough back. But that swings out to there. Or you can be sitting back in the bed, it's there, tilts that way, spin, whatever. I got my Xbox there. I was playing the Xbox One, but I just got back from a camping trip and I wanted to play NHL. Ended up having a little bit more fun doing other things, so we never touched it. Oh, that's kind of what happens when you're camping. No, my Bluetooth speaker, headphones, carbon monoxide detector. I uh, installed this um, power bar right here for a bunch of outlets. One cord goes over here for my TV. And yeah, I'll be removing this eventually because I keep hitting my head on it and I want to be able to get from the back, I mean, from the front to the back. I'm also going to remove the center console. But, yeah, so I really tried to focus on the important bits that were probably going to rest underneath all the other stuff first. Like the power system and the... Well, I guess the bed is arguably the last thing you should do with that logic, but here we are. Okay, here's the back. I got all my cooking stuff all packed in there. A couple of tools to access the spare tire because I actually buried it right there under my diesel heater tank. So I basically can't get to my spare tire tools, but that's fine because I've got everything. So I actually built this box here. It's got brackets, insulation, Everything's cut to size so I can put a air filter in there and then down in there. There's uh, on the right um, Let's see well, On the right is my two auxiliary batteries that I built from broken e-bike batteries and the uh, one on the left is my diesel heater I got roughly 1.1 kilowatt hours of energy total I got a thousand watt inverter. It's a modified sine wave. I'm going to get a pure sine wave eventually. Some devices just don't turn on or they make a really loud buzzing noise. But luckily, Xbox and uh, monitor are not one of them. 
you know, tire chains, of course, front wheel drive, and um, I plan on traveling in the winter. Uh, this system should work in minus 30. But uh, right now, this is my only charging method. I am currently installing this wire that runs right from the battery, from the alternator, through all the interior paneling. I'll be putting it to a distribution block and then it, that will lead and split to two buck converters, B-U-C-K, uh, which will take the 14.6 volts from the alternator and put it down to the 12.6 maximum that I built these packs for because the uh, lead acid and lithium ion are two different chemistries. I can also adjust the amperage that it charges. Eventually I'll have to install a BMS because this is my only way of actually balancing the cells, but from my experience, I've never seen a pack unbalance itself unless the cells were actually damaged and then the battery's just done for anyways. Just, just from what I've seen, uh, but definitely going to check the balance like every five charges or something. I'll probably get a digital meter that will tell me as well. Always have a fire extinguisher. Now for the underside, I routed the heater exhaust basically right where my exhaust is. Seems like it's getting rusty in there. I saw a lot of water coming out, condensation from the exhaust. I don't know why it wouldn't light last night. I'll update you when I figure that out. So there's the intake. And there's the exhaust. And you can see the little high temperature piece of fuel line there that I put next to the exhaust. Because they wanted you to just stick this weak green line on the fitting. And I just took one look at it and like, no, scrap in. Get the white, high quality one, one that came with my first heater. Been heating my garage for two years now with it, and it's fine. Very efficient. I try to run it on about half of Hertz, like half the fuel pump speed. Seems to last the longest, or produce the most and last the longest. Good balance at that speed. Um, well, I guess I didn't show you my venting. It's not the best, and for some reason my heater had to run on full blast all night last night, and it was only zero, which makes no sense to me because I've tested this in minus 15, and it had no problem maintaining the temperature. Um, might be something about being in bed mode with the whole bed covering the vent, but yeah, I'll figure that out later. And that pretty much concludes my build as of now. I will keep you guys updated as I go. I've got tons of ideas. Right now I've got pulse width modulator to dim my lights that I need to install. And I have a little device, the buck converter, for charging my batteries whenever I start the engine. And that will be awesome.